Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be walking you through some secret Fortnite settings that will instantly improve your gameplay in Chapter 4. Now guys, yes, I know I make a lot of settings videos, and when I say a lot, I truly mean a lot. But don't get it twisted, this is not one of those guides. What I'll be covering today are not the usual video and graphic options that I've covered 5 million times already. Instead, what we'll be looking at are more specific settings, stuff such as the new auto-confirm edits option, the secret launcher plugins, epic just added, as well as a small tweak Epic made to the in-game double movement settings that I don't think I've seen anyone talk about. Except for me, of course. So as always, guys, make sure to drop a like down below if this video helps you out. Also, please be sure to use code Jerrion. It should give you, like, more FPS or something. But with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into these new settings, shall we? Alright, so to begin, as you can see, we haven't been on this map in a while. You guys should know the clip this map is from. But the setting we are going to begin with, the most important one, it's actually on the second settings page, your game settings. It is the one button reset option, which Epic nicely put. You can see it down here in the building setting. Auto confirm edits. In total, there's four different settings, and I apologize by the way, the keyboard kind of blocks it, but the keyboard is going to be very important later on. It even shows what buttons I press and when. It's gotta be useful. Back to the setting though, auto confirm edits. It actually replaced confirm edit on release. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but look, confirm edit on release, my favorite setting, it's not there. It's actually part of the auto confirm edit setting. And so I'm basically just gonna walk you through this, explain how it works, what the best option is for you guys. I mean, you can start by reading it. It says on the right, are edit actions automatically confirmed and applied when you finish them? Edit refers to changing the shape of the piece. Reset refers to returning a piece to its original original shape, and both will automatically confirm and apply both edit actions and reset actions. So I'm not gonna lie, Epic kind of gave a pretty dog shit explanation. Sorry, Donnie Mustard. But essentially what the setting does is it has two things. The first one is confirm edit on release. That is in there. So there's confirm edit on release on, as well as confirm edit on release off. I use confirm edit on release on, and you know, I'm a big supporter of it. But then the other half of the setting, which is also part of your edits, which is is why it's in the auto confirm edits option is now it adds the one button reset which i don't have on reset just refers to this you press right click on your mouse as you're editing something and it resets it wait i just realized i didn't even reset that that's kind of important the part i left out is confirming which that's literally the main part of the setting but essentially what i mean by one button reset is with the reset option on and again i'm going to explain all four what one button reset does is if you go to reset something, right? So I'm holding the edit right now. I pressed E once. Look. So I'm holding the edit. Now if I go to press right click, it's gonna automatically confirm it. As soon as I press right click, watch my mouse. So boom. Automatically confirms it for me. And that's actually pretty dang nice. Like look how fast this is. It's almost as fast as scroll wheel reset. I mean, can you guys even... Eh, I guess score wheel reset's mainly faster because you don't have to grab onto the edit. That's the one slow part. You're just going down with your scroll wheel twice. Meanwhile, if you use this one, you have to actually grab the edit, pressing your edit key, and then you have to press right click. It'd be quicker if it was two of the same buttons, just how scroll wheel reset is. But that is what one button reset is. That's what the reset in the auto confirms edits description says. That's what it refers to. However, confusingly enough, there's four settings for it. Two of them are for it off, two of them are for it on. I know it sounds confusing, but let me just walk you through them. It's really not that hard. Starting with auto confirm edits none. What none? refers to is confirm edit on release off as well as reset on press off. So neither of those two options are on. Both of them are off. None. You see, Epic's kind of smart. So like if I go to edit, I have to confirm it. That's the original edit that a lot of people still use, a lot of pros. It's not bad or anything, but it's confirm edit on release off as well as like I said, reset on press off. So if I go to reset, I have to press right click and then I have to reset using my edit key again. I have to to confirm it manually. It doesn't just reset with one button press. Then auto confirm edits on edit. All this is, is confirm edit on release on. So look, as soon as I let go of my left click, it's gonna edit for me. That's what confirm edit on release does. That's why I look kind of young, even though I'm old. My edits aren't that slow. But the other thing is that because it's only edit, it doesn't have reset. So one button reset is off. If I go to reset, as I said, and I press right click, you can see it doesn't automatically do it for me. I have to manually confirm the reset. The only thing it does for me is confirm my 
my edits, it doesn't confirm my reset, so only edit is on. And if you kind of see what Epic has done with it, that will mean that the reset auto confirm edits option, only the reset will be enabled, so confirm edit on release is off. Look, I let go, I would have to confirm the edit myself, but run button reset is now on. So look, right click, boom, does it automatically for me. It's freaking amazing, bang. Look how quick that is. Really nice for you controller players. And then lastly, guys, the final auto confirm edits option is both. That is probably the easiest one to understand. That means confirm edit on releases on, as well as the one button reset is also enabled. So look, boom, confirm edit on release bang 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 and then if i go to reset something right click boom both of them are on pretty freaking nice pretty cool that epic gave the option for all of them even though they didn't explain it the greatest that's what i'm here for so that is the auto confirm edits option and what all four of them mean now, in terms of pros and cons, guys, the main con, at least for keyboard, is that, you know, scroll wheel is faster. There's no reason to actually get used to it, considering scroll wheel, you just scroll down twice. Look, boom, it does it just for you way quicker, because you're using the same button twice. You're just scrolling down. So, if you don't have scroll wheel reset on and you're on keyboard, what are you doing? This is way, way quicker. And then, in addition to that, which is mainly the con for controller players, because I'm gonna recommend it to you guys. The main con is sort of the main con with confirm edit on release, where if I go, if I try to reset and then re-edit, as soon as I press right click, it's gonna confirm the edit for me, and that means it's basically impossible to press right click, and then, yeah, you can't press left click again because you're still not in the edit mode. Let me show you guys what I mean by that. This is one button reset off. If I press right click, I can re-edit the build. You see that? It's like how if you have edit on release, you can't just reset and then re-edit it again. This time it's for reset, so reset on press on. You're not able to re-edit builds after you reset them. Look, that's what happens with reset on release on. Or no, reset on press, not release. One button reset on. It's the main con and downside to it. It's good to know, I guess, that you can't re-edit builds after you reset them. But at least to me, I feel like that's not too big of a con because, you know, there's so many pros who use confirm edit on release. Peter Bot Booga, they get around it with editing your builds, so resetting should really not be that hard. Like, even just thinking about it now, most of the time when I reset something, I use scroll wheel reset. One button reset is kind of scroll wheel reset for controller, so you should kind of get used to it. It's very quick. Obviously, there's some instances where I will reset and then re-edit like that, but I mean, you could get around it. The reset on press option is just way too fast, specifically if you're on controller. Like, come on. Should I, should I plug in the controller? Hold on a second. Are we pl- Oh, what? I can't hear my game. Yo, what happened to the sound? Okay, finally. There we go. Look how goaded I am, boys. Oh, yeah. 360? Oh, oh. Uh, okay, yeah. Let me just hop down. But reset on press. It should be on. How do I reset? R? Oh! Oh, heck no. That's insane for controller. <laughs> Wait. And then press... Oh, hell no. I'm switching to controller. My only advantage of scroll wheel reset is gone. Oh, I'm switching to control. Yeah, I'm not switching to controller. Now, as far as which setting you should use or whether or not I actually recommend the one button reset option, all of that entirely depends on what input you're using as well as what setting you're used to. For example, if you're on keyboard and mouse, you already have scroll wheel reset. Scroll wheel reset, as I said before, is still much faster than the one button reset. So anyone on keyboard and mouse, there's really no reason to have reset or both on in the auto confirm edits option. Just use none or edit. Edit for confirm edit on release. On the other hand though, for all you controller players, I highly, highly recommend you start mastering the one button reset. But wait a minute, Jerrion, you're not a controller player. Why should I listen to you? You're also washed. Well, while you might be right, little Timmy, I have been playing a little bit too much FIFA. I still have talked to a bunch of pro controller players recently. One of them includes a grand finalist named Bully, and he told me he is 100% using it going forward. He said his resets are much quicker with it. He told me he could easily get used to having to reset and then edit the build again, rather than the old way of re-editing it. That was the main con, by the way. Bully even said that even though 
he literally started using it yesterday. He's so confident with it and he likes it so much that he's going to be using it in grand finals next week. If that doesn't convince you, then I don't know what will. So yeah, lads, if you're on controller, definitely start getting used to this setting. I know I said it before, but if you want to actually use it, make sure you either have on reset or both. Reset will be if you don't use confirm edit on release. Both will be if you do use confirm edit on release. The two of those options have the one button reset enabled. So use reset or both if you're on controller. Use none or edit if you're on keyboard and mouse. It's very, very simple, guys. And for you guys on controller, one button reset or reset on press, it will definitely improve your editing speed. Or well, your reset speed. You guys know what I mean. Okay, so moving on to the next settings I want to show. Both of them this time are on the, where is it? Mouse and keyboard settings. My head, it kind of blocks. Oh wait, let me get the keyboard back. The keyboard has returned, boys. But what I'm going to do is just hide everything really quickly. Both of the settings I'm going to show are on this page. You have the keyboard movement ones, which we'll cover after these first ones. But the settings I'm talking about are in your mouse sensitivity. Epic added building and editing sensitivities for keyboard and mouse. The default for these is 100%. That's basically your normal X and Y mouse sensitivity. But the way these actually work is just like with controller, you can make it up to 10 times your X and Y sets. 600 would be 6 times, 500 would be 5 times, or 9 times 5, 45%. But like, all they do, it's pretty self-explanatory, is they make your building and editing sensitivity. Anytime you have your build or edits out, they make those faster than your normal sense. So like, my normal sense, as you guys saw, was 9 percent. That means just me aiming, looking around, anything where I'm not having my builds or my edits out. That's my default 9% X and Y. But then if I go and you guys saw, I actually have my building and editing sense. It's these numbers. I have them on 105, which is... 9 times 1.05, not really that much higher. What, that's 9.45? 9.5% 9 X and Y, basically. That means when I go to build an edit, look, it's gonna be a little quicker than 9%. Oh, oh, guys, I did not turn back on. Auto confirm edits on edit. <laughs> that's confirm edit on release. Come on, show him, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, hit. Oh, I'm washed. So yeah, anytime I go to build or edit, it's gonna be slightly faster than my normal X and Y. I don't have it on 100%. 100% would be the same exact X and Y for building and editing as just looking around. But honestly, guys, I recommend if you're on keyboard and mouse, I mean, pretty much all controller players use a different building and editing sense, like a higher one. I recommend trying out something like, you know, 105%, maybe 110, 120. It doesn't hurt to try things out, and from what I've found is my aim really is not that much worse. The only reason my aim is bad is from playing too much FIFA, guys. Don't get it twisted. The setting really is not bad at all. So go try it out. Let me hide my face again. It's in the keyboard and mouse settings, building and editing sense. I use 105. But the other setting that I wanted to talk about, which no one really has, and Epic added it kind of recently, is in your keyboard movement. So use custom diagonals, obviously have on. This is double movement, your forward diagonal angle and your backward diagonal angle. All those refer to are if you're pressing W and D, I'm going 70 degrees, W and A, that's your forward diagonal angle, 70 degrees, but I mean, it's kind of preference. Backward diagonal angle is obviously when you press S and D or S and A. I think I have this on 135, which should be the default. Yep, 135 and then 70. But what Epic added recently is this one, which is strafe angle. This is also known as single key strafing, which if you guys remember from my old double movement guide, I said that if you use single key strafing, you shouldn't use the in-game one yet because in-game didn't have it and all the third-party ones like Wooting and Keys 2X they did. But now what Epic did is they added it so you can just use the in-game double movement. And what single key strafing or strafe angle is, is let me put 115. What it refers to is if you only press A or you only press D, you get a whole new strafe angle. So you see, I'm only pressing A or D. I'm not pressing W, I'm not pressing S. W and S, by the way, you only run straight. There's no strafe angle with that. But this gives you a whole new strafe angle. I think Epic added, oh yeah, they did 1 to 180. So 180 is gonna be... <laughs> <laughs> Just straight backwards to give it like a weird plane, not a plane in the sky, like a X and Y plane. 
But I mean, there are a few pros who use this. I'm pretty sure Nick A30 does, which <laughs> Nick A30 has the advanced movement. This is just one of those settings where if you can master it, you know, it's an advantage. Anytime you can improve your movement, just have something else that no one else does in their toolbox. Look at this. I'm on 70, which I think that's the highest you can get by sprinting. But wait, let me, how high can you get? 85? Oh no, you can't sprint. Maybe 80? No. So I guess 75 is pretty much the highest you can get. And look, look at this angle. You're basically going perfectly sideways. This is different. You can see, look, I'm no longer going perfectly sideways on my normal strafing angle. So now if you have just your normal one, you can use single key strafing for those moments where you want to run perfectly sideways. And then if you press W again, you have your normal movement. It doesn't feel as awkward as if you're, you know, you're trying to run perfectly sideways, but oh look, I can't because my strafe angle isn't that tight. But now with single key strafing, look, you let go of W and you have a new strafe angle. It's pretty dang nice. I recommend you guys try it out or use it. Try this on 75 for the strafe angle. Get used to it. You got a whole new strafe angle in your back pocket. <laughs> Let's go. Papa Cherry it may be washed in game, but his tips, his tips will never be washed. Final setting though, boys, which is actually going to be on your desktop. It's if you click your Epic Games Launcher, what you're going to do is go to your library, go over to Fortnite and click the little three dots, go over to options, bang. I've showed this page before. It's the Fortnite installation options, but we have some new stuff. And by new, I mean one new thing. Epic now gave you the option to actually uninstall your DX12 shaders. So in total on my PC, it's five gigabytes. I don't use DX12 and I assume a lot of you guys do not as well. Performance mode, as I always say, is going to get you the best performance. So essentially, all I want you to do is just unclick the DirectX 12 shaders. Boom. Press apply. That's going to uninstall all of them because we don't use DX12. If you do use DX12 though, don't uninstall them because then when you get back on the game, the game is going to be very buggy. DX12 shaders are like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but you'll be like running around the map and all the shaders will be compiling. Your game will be stuttering and it won't be that nice, but then once all of them actually compile which wait I just realized epic actually made it so if you just click on this and then apply and install all of them all five gigabytes you don't need to go into game and have all of them compile for you and your first few games won't be laggy on dx12 oh my Epic, I love you for that. That's genius. So yeah, if you do use DX12, make sure you go to the options and make sure that is installed. Mine's currently installing because I wanted to show you guys. But if you're on performance mode, uninstall them because you're not going to use them. It's five gigabytes of extra storage. It will also make your game run better on performance mode. And I mean, if you have high resolution textures enabled, also turn those off because those are eight gigabytes. Save the world. I don't play it. The only thing I have is Fortnite Core and Battle Royale. So yeah, I'm going to have to uninstall it again after it installs but that's the new setting epic added in your fortnite installation options that's a cool new change that i really enjoy i'm kind of a nerd for it so yeah boys those are all the settings make sure to drop a like subscribe use code jerian let me know if this helped otherwise time to play some fifa